Hey, Davin here with Digital Trends, and today we're taking a look at the Panasonic Lumix G9. In many ways, this is Panasonic's answer to the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II. It's a high-end Micro Four Thirds camera built for enthusiast and professional photographers. This also fills a sort of horizontal gap in Panasonic's own product lineup, with the G9 differentiating itself from the equally capable but increasingly video-focused GH series. In fact, the G9 shares a lot of its underlying technology with the GH5, but there are plenty of reasons why still photographers will want to go with the G9. But with this type of camera generally being the specialty of Olympus, has Panasonic done enough to attract the right customer? The short answer is yes. The G9 not only stands out among Micro Four Thirds, but from the entire mirrorless camera market. And this isn't so much about what's on the inside, but really what's on the outside. It may not be pretty, but Panasonic has dialed up its typical utilitarian design to the next level. The top plate is dominated by a large LCD information display, just like you'd expect to find on a pro DSLR, but which is very unique on a mirrorless camera. The grip is large but comfortable, and while the body is overall bigger and heavier than the Olympus EM1, it feels very sturdy and reassuring in the hand. Like the GH5, the body is fully weather sealed and gets dual SD card slots for extra storage, backup, or splitting file types. The viewfinder is also much larger and sharper than that of the EM1, and frankly, most other mirrorless cameras. It can also refresh at 120 frames per second, bringing it closer to imitating the feel of an optical viewfinder. The 3-inch 1.04 million dot monitor is down from the 3.2-inch 1.6 million dot screen of the GH5, but it is otherwise very similar and still flips out a full 180 degrees. Now, you may disagree with us, but we do prefer the G9's control layout to the EM1's. It follows a more traditional pattern. White balance ISO and exposure compensation buttons are all right up top while your autofocus mode switch and AF point selector joystick are just to the left of the thumb rest. And look at this, the power switch is built in right around the shutter button, exactly where it should be. You've also got dual command dials, a locking exposure dial with a dedicated drive mode dial nested beneath it, and all kinds of customizable function buttons. There's even a function lever on the front of the camera for quickly enabling other modes or controls, whether that be silent shooting, bracketing, touchpad autofocus, and much more. As far as the exterior goes, this camera feels almost perfect, but Panasonic has also beefed up things on the inside. The G9 uses the same 20 megapixel 4 3rd sensor as the GH5, but the five axis sensor shift stabilization is now even more advanced. When combined with an optically stabilized lens, you get 6.5 stops of shake reduction power. Even with non-stabilized lenses, this system works great to remove shake from both still photos and videos. For video, it's not quite the same as using an external gimbal, but it definitely makes a huge difference. Panasonic has also expanded the sensor shift capabilities by adding a multi-shot high resolution mode, just like that found on the EM1 Mark II. It takes eight exposures, shifting the sensor by half a pixel's width in between each to produce an 80 megapixel RAW or JPEG file. And this is not a gimmick. The images shot in high res mode are rich with detail. We also noticed less shadow noise and often more accurate color in really contrasty lighting. This was always a big advantage Olympus had in the past, and it's nice to see Panasonic has caught up. Just remember, the camera has to be on a tripod or otherwise perfectly still, for high res mode to work, and it will cause moving subjects to blur, so it's not perfect. Now, the G9 may not expressly target sports shooters, but it does offer plenty of speed. The mechanical shutter tops out at a respectable nine frames per second, but you can shoot 20 frames per second with the electronic shutter while still using continuous autofocus. Of course, the G9 also gets the latest versions of Panasonic's 4K and 6K photo modes, allowing you to shoot up to 30 frames per second at 6K resolution, which is 18 megapixels, or 60 frames per second at 4K resolution. And yes, that does mean the G9 can shoot 4K video at 60 frames per second, just like the GH5. 
but that's where the similarities end for the high-end video features. The G9 is limited to 8-bit 420 at either 100 megabits per second for 4K 30 or 150 megabits per second for 4K 60. Even so, video quality is very good and should easily meet the needs of most hybrid photographers. You don't get Vlog L support, but you do get both Cinelike D and Cinelike V profiles for maintaining a bit more dynamic range. The Lumix G9 simultaneously breaks new ground while staying true to what Panasonic has always done best, building solid hybrid cameras with an emphasis on functionality and usability. If you're a stickler for image quality, you're still probably better off with a larger sensor camera, but the G9 has closed the gap thanks to the high resolution mode. Beyond that, this is simply one of the most versatile cameras we have ever tested, thanks to its high-speed shooting options, rock-steady stabilization, and its all-around great performance.